And now on Radio 4, our Saturday drama, based on the best-selling 1957 novel written during what became known as the Cold War and which features a certain secret service agent who holds the rare double O prefix, the licence to kill. From Russia, with love. By Ian Fleming. Dramatised by Archie Scottney. Starring Toby Stevens as James Bond, Eileen Atkins as Rosa Klebb, and Tim Piggott Smith as Kerim Bay. With John Sessions, Mark Gatiss, John Standing, Jamie D, Julian Sands, Olga Federi, and Nathaniel Parker. Martin Jarvis is the voice of Ian Fleming. In 1955, the official murder organization of the Soviet government operated both at home and abroad. Its name is a contraction of Schmidt Spionam, Smirsch, Death to Spies. Good evening, comrades. Be seated. Late one evening, a small group of uniformed officers took their places at a conference table. Somewhere in Moscow. Comrades, foreign policy of USSR was formerly a hard policy of steel. Ha! Stalin! <laughs> but now, hard, soft. Unless tonight we make a recommendation for a great intelligence victory, there will be displeasure. We have at once to recommend to the Presidium an act of terrorism in the intelligence field, and we, of Smirch, will carry out this act. I call upon Colonel Kronstein, our distinguished chess grandmaster, head of strategy, to comment. Thank you, General. Comrades, our critical move must be aimed at the heart of the intelligence apparatus of the West, to inflict grave damage on the enemy, hidden damage, but which will be the secret talk of government circles. Our own operatives will be stimulated to greater efforts by this display of our strength, of our genius. Choice of target, your suggestion? Perhaps Sweden, Comrade Colonel? No. There are always spy scandals in Sweden. One more would not make the world look up. The Americans? Eh, They try to do everything with money. Good spies will not work for money alone, only bad ones. (laughs) The Americans have their successes, Comrade. Eh, Of course, General. You cannot sow a million seeds without reaping... One potato. Mm. Comrade General, may I be permitted? Yes, Colonel Clapp. England. Ah, England. I have grudging respect for her so-called MI5. Yes? Yes. Yes. In certain types of operation, we constantly find they have been there before us. Their agents serve with devotion. We have nothing to fear from these British gentlemen, but their myth is a hindrance. Grandmaster. A curious breed, certainly. They are rarely awarded a decoration until they retire. (laughs) Their Mm. public school tradition, Mm. love of adventure. So, they are best of an indifferent lot, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you agree? Agreed. Then, comrades, an act of terrorism against the British Secret Service. Agreed, yes. Mm -hmm. And where does this myth Reside. Who is head of British Secret Service? He is an admiral, uh, known by the letter M. Mm. He is too old for women. It would be difficult to create a scandal around his death. Myths are built on heroes. Have they no one whose ignominious destruction would cause dismay? General, I have such a man in mind. <laughs> Good morning. Sorry to disturb your press-ups, Mr. Bond, but your coffee and toast is getting cold. Thanks, May. Put it down there, will you? How many today? Not so good. Twenty, maybe? No energy. Oh, my muscles are screaming. Your man was here again last night. Hmm? What man? About the television. He's been pestering me since Friday. After what I said to him about this sinful thing, you think he'd give up trying to sell us one? Go on, drink up. 
<sighs> Buy higher purchase too, if you please. Persistent chaps, these salesmen. <sighs> I gave him a right piece of my mind. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Disturbing folk at their supper. Asked him if he'd got any identification. Hmm? That fix him? No, it did not. Flourished his union card. Said he'd every right to earn his living. What living? Electrician's union, it was. Hmm. They're the communist one, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Exactly what did he say? That he's selling television sets on commission in his spare time. Says we're the only folk in Chelsea that haven't got one. Now, how does he know? No aerial on the house. Oh, you're clever, Mr. Bond. That'll be it. He's always wanting a word with you. I say I'm just the housekeeper. Naturally, I don't tell him anything about your movements. Hmm. Well, I expect you frighten him away this time, eh? Aye. Well, <laughs> eat your toast, Mr. Bond, and cheer up. Normally, James Bond wouldn't have been happy until he had solved the problem of the man from the Communist Union. He might even have reported it to his security section. But now, from weeks of idleness, the sword was rusty in the scabbard, and his mental guard was down. He could pinpoint the immediate cause of his low spirits. His love, for so many happy months, had left him. Tiffany Case, I miss you. Mm. Come right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Presidium's decision. To be killed with ignominy, mm. based on our recommendation of last week. Comrade Colonel Kronstein, I add but one thing to you, Grand Master. Let it be excellently accomplished. Of course, General. A great scandal is desired, no apparent Soviet involvement. A watch has already been placed on the British hero. He is called... Place. Let his name not be spoken yet. Even our walls have ears. Hmm. A watch on our target. The loss must be felt by their secret service. But will it help to destroy this myth, Colonel Clapp? Oh, yes, Comrade General. A matter of destroying a reputation as well as a life. Thank you. Comrade Kronstein. The deed must be done away from England. Sudden death in a country over whose press and radio we have influence. Uh, forgive me, Comrade, but how is this man to be got there? If the bait is important enough, Major, he will be sent to seize it. <laughs> how will you avoid appearance of trap? By giving the bait a touch of the unusual, eh, Colonel Clapp? Mm. I shall proceed to devise such a snare. And, Grand Master... If your bait is successful in attracting its prey... Then we shall need an assassin, an expert killer, with perfect command of the English language. Colonel Clebb? Comrades, you may leave this to me. But there is one more vital thing we shall require. Comrade Colonel Clebb, I'm Corporal Romanova. You asked to see me? I did. Good evening, Comrade Corporal. Enter. Close the door. Better I see you here privately, more cosy than my office. Step forward. Stand there. Comrade Colonel. Hmm. You are a fine-looking girl, Corporal Romanova. Good. Be seated. There. I have your file here. Your life on these pages. I see. The state is pleased with you. I'm grateful, Comrade Colonel. You have been singled out for an important assignment, a great honor for you. Thank you. It carries much responsibility. It bears a higher rank. I congratulate you on your promotion, comrade, on completion of the assignment to the rank of Captain of State Security. Captain? I... I'm honored, comrade colonel. Mm. Now, my dear, this should be celebrated. You must not think we senior officers are inhuman. A good excuse for French champagne. Try a chocolate. While I wrestle with the cork. Oh, we girls, we really need a man to help us, don't we? <laughs> oh, and music. You like Tchaikovsky? Of course. There. Nutcracker. The chocolates are from Switzerland. The soft centers are the round ones. The hard ones are not so manageable. I will try a round one. Champagne. Zawasze zdrowie, comrade Tatiana. My warmest congratulations. Zawasze zdrowie, comrade Colonel. Another. To the health of your new department, comrade. To smirch. To smirch. 
and not to business. <coughs> so, enough of music. <coughs> Have you ever wished to live abroad? No, I'm happy in Moscow. You never thought what it might be like living in the West? All those beautiful clothes? No, comrade. And if the state required it? I would obey, of course. Are you a virgin, comrade? What? No, comrade colonel. More champagne. You can trust me, my sugar plum. Yes, I'm sorry. Good. Just one more intimate question. As between girls, do you enjoy making love? Uh, um, Does it give you pleasure? Hmm? Well, naturally, comrade colonel, when one is in love... And supposing you were not in love? It would depend on the man. A sensible answer. Here is a photograph. What about this man? He's good looking. I cannot tell, perhaps, if he was gentle. No, keep it, my dear. Put it beside your bed. You would like to know the task for which you have been chosen from all the girls in Russia? Yes, yes, indeed, comrade colonel. It is a delightful duty, comrade. A real labor of love. A matter of falling in love with this man. That is all. But I don't even know him. He is an English spy. Боже мой. Yes, from now on you are in love with him, so you had better get used to the idea. And no silliness, comrade. This is an important state matter. And take your hand away from your silly face. Sit up in your chair and pay attention, or it will be the worse for you. Understood? Yes, comrade colonel. For the next few weeks, you will be most carefully trained for this operation. You will be instructed in all the arts of allurement. Then you will be sent to a foreign country, somewhere in Europe. Perhaps Istanbul. You will meet this man... You will seduce him. Your body belongs to the state. Understood? Yes, comrade colonel. You will accompany him to England. There you will no doubt be questioned. We will supply you with certain answers. Eventually you will be brought back to Moscow. Any questions at this stage? What will happen to the man? That is a matter of indifference to us. We shall merely use him as a means to introduce you into England. Your impressions of life there will be of great value to the state. You understand? Yes, if only I can do it well. It's an honor. Good. I'm satisfied. And now we can relax, my dear. Please, turn out the top light, Tatiana. The switch is by the door. Yes, Colonel. That's it. Come over to the couch. We must get to know each other better. You may call me Rosa. Come here. Comrade Colonel Kleb, I... I'm honored. Deeply honored, but... Um... Good night. Thank you. Good night. Oh, oh, Are you sure you can trust him in a foreign country, Colonel Kleb, your assassin? He will not go private. Of course not. He would no more abandon the Soviet Union than a drug addict would abandon the source of his cocaine. He came over to us when? Ten years ago, Comrade Kronstein. It's all here. Original name, Donovan Grant. Now, Granitsky. Irish mother, German father. Intriguing. Narcissist, asexual, natural killer. Cunning as a fox. And my top executioner. Good. Thank you. And this uh, Romanova. She is very beautiful. Her English is excellent. I have given her a certain version of the objective. And if she should show signs of faltering... I have the addresses of several relatives and previous lovers. Mm. Such a hint would be... Sufficient. I am satisfied, Comrade Kleb. So, opening gambit. James! Morning, Moneypenny. I've been wondering where you'd got to. Me too, Moneypenny. Em's asking for you. He says it's urgent and you can skip the research committee. Well, that's something. Any idea what it's about? I might, as it happens, but I couldn't possibly comment. Eh? You'd better hear it from him. There's quite a swerve on this one. Oh, well, a change from this interminable inquiry. I don't care for petty dictators with cavalry moustaches. Really? 
I've always found Captain Troop rather amusing. I tell you, Money Penny, in most well run businesses, there's always such a man. In the Secret Service, it is Paymaster Captain Troop, retired, head of admin. Charming new summer frock, by the way. Thank you, James. I didn't think you'd notice. So, you're not enjoying the committee? Look, Money Penny, if MI5 and the Secret Service want to concern themselves seriously with the Atom Age intellectual spy, they should employ some actual intellectuals to counter them. A retired officer of the Indian Army can't possibly understand the thought processes of a Burgess or a McLean. Miss Money Penny, where is he? He's just arrived, Em. He's coming right up. Perfectly put, Money Penny. <laughs> well, here I go. Those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make bored. See you later. You're late, 007. Sit down. Yes. Sorry, sir. <clears throat> do you mind if I ask you a personal question, James? No, sir. It's to do with your um, friend, Miss Case. I heard that you've been seeing a lot of each other since that diamond business. You care to comment? Well, sir, there was some idea we might get married, but uh, then she met some chap in the American embassy, Marine Corps Major. I gather she's going to marry him. They've both gone back to the States. Fine girl. Bit neurotic. We had too many rows. Probably my fault. Anyway, it's over now. Mm -hmm. Doesn't do to get mixed up with neurotic women in this business, James. They hang on your gun arm, if you know what I mean. Yes. Right. Well... Yesterday, there was a long signal in from Istanbul. Seems a Russian girl has made contact with our head of station T out there. Very good looking, apparently. Is he, sir? The girl, 007, don't be silly. She told him an extraordinary story. Who is head of T, sir? A man called Kareem. Darko Kareem. You mm. know him, surely. I've never worked in Turkey. Well, a remarkable fellow. Turkish father, English mother. Runs the station under cover of a thriving spice warehouse in the bazaar. All things nice. What? Sugar and spice. You being facetious, 007? Certainly not, sir. Oh. Uh, that's little girls, as a matter of fact. I'm sorry? You mean puppy dog's tails? Oh, yes. Slugs and snails. And puppy dog's tails. That's, that's what, what little, little boys, boys are... are made of. Yes, all right, 007. I'm sure he does a wonderful job, sir. Anyway, this girl's story was that she was a corporal in the KGB, just got transferred to their Istanbul centre as a cipher officer. She engineered the transfer from Moscow because she wanted to get out of Russia and come over to us. Why? Because she's in love with you. Comrade General, I am happy to report the Istanbul ploy has worked. First contact Good news, Comrade Kleb, so long as you are satisfied. We have a strong apparat there. British Secret Service has only a small station. Also, I have received details from our Grand Master of the proposed assassination location. Which country? France. The French press will like the story. Sensational disclosures, sex and espionage. Ah, excellent. Granitsky? Trained and prepared. And cipher department? Has no objection to handing over the outer case of the new Spectre machine. That will be attractive. The resident director in Istanbul will entrust it to Corporal Romanova at the right moment. She will believe it to be genuine. I commend you, Comrade Colonel. So, the conspiracia against this anonymous English spy can move forward. Yes. My girl has done well. On this call... You may speak his name, Rosa. Bond. James Bond. I'm sorry? She says what? That she's in love with you. What? Her name's Tatiana Romanova. Ever heard of her? Good God, no. I mean, no, sir. It's so ridiculous, it just might be true. <laughs> This girl is 24. She's been working in the KGB's Central Index. Same as our records in their English section. One of the files she had to deal with was yours. I'd like to see it. Her story is that she first took a fancy to the photographs they've got of you. Admired your looks and so on. She read up on all your cases and decided you were a hell of a fellow. 
Well, I... I said you reminded her of some Russian hero. <sighs> if only she could transfer to one of their foreign centres, she could get in touch with you and you would come and rescue her. <laughs> Crazy story. Now, wait. If you were a film star, you'd get daft letters from all over the world. Here's a silly girl doing a secretary's job in Moscow. She's faced with your dashing features and gets what I believe is called a crush. Well, she must have guts. Head of tea says she was frightened. Meeting took place on a ferry to the mouth of the Bosphorus and back. Anyway, she told Darko Kareem that her passion for you gradually developed into a phobia. So she applied for a transfer to Istanbul, the cipher department. Arrived there about three weeks ago, got hold of Kareem's name, sent him a note. Of course, his first reactions were, was it a trap? But the clincher was, if she could come over, she would bring her cipher machine with her. The brand new Spectre machine? We'd give our eyes to have it 007. That wouldn't do much good. What? I mean, yes, we could decipher all the top secret traffic. The loss of the Spectre would be a major disaster in the Russian Secret Service. You see what I mean, 007? Mm. High stakes. Of course, she'd be shot out of hand if anyone even dreamt of her plan. Mm. Kareem knows this might be our most important coup since the war. So what's happening, sir? Well, nothing so far. She just said that she would keep her end of the bargain if we keep ours. That was the last Kareem saw of her. But, of course, he couldn't um, guarantee that we would make the bargain with her. I can guess what's coming. Right. Her condition is that you go out to Istanbul, bring her and the machine back to England. Only one snag. What's that? Suppose I don't come up to her expectations. That's why I asked about Miss Case 007. Better make sure that you do. The BEA flight to Rome, Athens and Istanbul headed south along the wide air channel that takes the Mediterranean traffic from England. Bond unfastened his seatbelt, lit a cigarette, reached for the slim attaché case on the floor and placed it on the seat beside him. He took out a spy novel and closed the lid. Q Branch had put together this smart-looking bag of tricks. Pretty nifty, 007. You see, we've packed 50 rounds of 25 caliber ammunition between the leather and the lining of the spine. And in each of the sides, a flat throwing knife built by Wilkinson's, actually, the sword makers. Oh, and a hidden compartment in the handle. Pressure here delivers a cyanide death pill into the palm of your hand. <laughs> Sorry, Q, that goes straight down the lavatory. Well, just don't tell M007. What's this? Shaving cream? You'd think so. The whole top of the tube unscrews to reveal the silencer for your Beretta, packed in cotton wool. Happy 007. The final leg of the journey to Turkey was a 90-minute flight from Athens across the dark Aegean. Bond's thoughts were sour. Pimping for England, that's what I'm doing. Cipher machine? And am I flying towards some torturous KGB trap? Why me? If the Russians want to kill me, they'll only to shoot me in the streets of London. Or put a bomb in my car. Buckle your seatbelt, please, Mr. Bond. Some turbulence ahead. Oh, right. Thank you. Cigarette, Mr. Bond? Mm. Welcome to Station T. Turkish tobacco. The best. Thanks. And for the car last night, Mr. Kareem. <laughs> You must thank our Russian friends, too, huh? You were met by both sides. They always follow my car when it goes to the airport. Yeah, but why the rolls? It only ties you in with me. Oh, my friend. Your existence here has to be evident so our young lady friend can contact you. It is a condition she has laid down. She will make her own arrangements for the meeting. Why make things difficult for her? <laughs> All right. Just tell me what to do. I shall be honoured. Beautiful room. Yes, well, our friends paid me a visit yesterday, fixed a limpet bomb on the wall outside, timed the fuse to catch me at my desk. By good luck, I had taken a few minutes off to relax on the couch over there with a young Romanian girl <laughs> who still believes that a man will tell secrets in exchange for love. <laughs> the bomb went off at... 
a vital moment. <laughs> really? I fear it was too much for her. She decided my lovemaking is altogether too violent. <laughs> it was a rush to get the room put to rights in time for your visit. The hole in the brickwork is still behind that tapestry. Eh? And uh, beyond the Halil Pasha painting is a concealed door. We will go through it after lunch. Please, sit down. You know, I cannot understand this sudden breach of the peace. Both sides live together very amicably in Istanbul. It can only lead to trouble for our companions from Moscow. I shall be forced to uh, rebuke the man who did it, huh? when I have found out his name. <laughs> How is your hotel, eh? I was surprised you chose the uh, Crystal Palace. <laughs> it is little better than a disorderly house, uh, what the French call a Bezodrome. Uh, it is quite a haunt of the Russians. Well, I didn't want to stay in any of the smart places, and the, the name amused me. Okay. Now to business, eh? I will have two seats reserved on every outgoing plane for the next week. And, and you must have a passport, huh? One will be sufficient. She can travel as your wife. It will be ready by this evening. What name would you like? Take your pick. Somerset. Huh? My mother came from there. <laughs> David Somerset. Profession of sales director? And the girl? Caroline. Oh, she looks like a Caroline. <laughs> A couple of clean-limbed young English people with a taste for travel. What about customs? They never look at anything, James. You will declare some Turkish delight for your friends in London. Oh, if you have to get out quickly, leave your hotel bill and luggage to me. Not too many risks, Darker. Huh. But I am greedy for life. Well, be careful. M thinks the world of you. He does? Mm. <laughs> in that case, I will not let the iron crab have my body yet. <laughs> <sighs> Okay. Noon. Just time for the roads to take you back to your hotel, or there might be a message. Have a good look at your things to see if anyone has been inquisitive. Ah, I am glad to be working with you, James. Eh? The car will bring you to Monsieur Cassisi in a bazaar for lunch. We will eat, offer, eh? and speak of love. Mr. Bond, I greatly regret. My colleague showed you to an inadequate room. Follow me, please. It was fine. No, Effendi. This way, top floor. It was not realized that you are friend of Kerim Bey. Your accoutrements have been moved to number 401, most gracious suite in our hotel. I was quite comfortable where I was. You will like this. What you call penthouse, reserved for honeymoon couples. Every comfort. My apologies, other room is not intended for visitors of distinction. Yeah, well, I don't mind having a look at it. Uh, certainly, Effendi. Uh, but plumbers are in your former room. <laughs> Turkish water supply. Here is entrance. Please, Effendi. Hmm. Not bad. Elegant. Note you step on book horror rugs with pleasure. Chandelier. Balcony for sunshine. Uh, through here, bedroom. Well... No harm, I suppose. Bed is large enough, yes. You like mirror. Very ornate. But if this is the honeymoon suite, shouldn't there be a mirror on the ceiling as well? <laughs> very good, Mr. Bond. British humour, very good. Bathroom adjoins. Your shaving equipment laid. You have shower and bidet. Luxury for friend of Karim Bay. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Enjoy. Enjoy. As soon as the manager had bowed himself out, Bond inspected the walls of the two rooms and the neighborhood of the bed and telephone. So why not take the suite? Why would there be microphones? What would be the point? His suitcase was on a bench near the chest of drawers. He knelt down. The bit of fluff he had trapped in the clasp was still there. He unlocked the suitcase and took out the little attache case. Then he went downstairs. No messages, Effendi. Thank you. Obsequious bastard. Is there some chess game being played out? Well, I don't care. If the new room is the opening gambit, fine. It has to begin somewhere. Wine? Cover Clédarier. Like it? Hmm. A very coarse burgundy, I'd say. Correct, huh? Much like any other Balkan wine. Yeah, but richer. Mm. James, <clears throat> I have made 
certain small moves. Now we can only wait for the girl. You like this dish? Raw meat, offal, laced with peppers, chives, bound together with yolk of egg. It's better than your kebab. Hey, try a fork for here. Hmm. Excellent. Steak tartare. Ha! Tartare food, eh? Formidable. <laughs> you ought to eat this every day. Good for those who wish to make much love. Huh? There are certain exercises for the same purpose. Like my father, I consume a large quantity of women. Unlike him, I also drink and smoke too much. These things do not go well with making love. Nor does this work I do. Too many tensions. A lot of thinking. Yeah, it takes the blood to the head instead of uh, to where it should be. Now, <clears throat> let's talk of this strange girl. Huh? Love. To me, that is the most inscrutable factor. Does this girl really love her idea of you? Will she love you when she sees you? Huh? Will you be able to love her? Enough. No comment. Yeah, I know. Do you believe her story? Is the whole business some complicated KGB plot? Ah, my friend, who can tell if a woman is lying about these things? Mm. Her eyes were innocent. Her knuckles were white on the guardrail of the ship. But in her heart... Whew, there is only one way of telling if a woman really loves you. Yes. In bed. Exactly. So... Do you like turkey? Oh, no. Don't tell me. <laughs> Not this afternoon. We will make a little foray into enemy territory. It will interest you. We shall move in the shadows, underground. You see the Pasha portrait? It slides. So. And so. Down the steps, you go first. Right. Careful, switch on your torch. Wait below. I must fix the door. A tunnel? It smells like a zoo. It's a lost drain from the Hall of Pillars. A thousand years ago it was built as a reservoir in case of siege. Only a trickle this time of year. Coming down. Two years ago, I had an idea. I went up the hill to the Hall of Pillars and bribed the watchman. I was right. I located the beginning of a tunnel. It went straight down the hill, under the street of books where the Russians have their place, and out into the Golden Horn, 20 yards from my warehouse. So we started digging from my end, hence the concealed door. It took us a year to get directly under the Russians. I presume we go up the slope. What's that? Oh, just rats. I hope you love animals. Ha! Ah! It's a long climb. No, no, no. Keep your torch on. Out of range of Bond's torch, in the blackness, hundreds of pinpoints of red light flickered and moved. Twenty yards away on either side, a thousand rats were looking at Bond. They are sniffing at your scent, eh? Despite being Turkish rats, they might not appreciate Old Spice. Floor is number 89, actually. Oh, sorry. I wonder what they'd do if my torch goes out. Ah, unfortunately, there is not much choice. Let's get started. I will lead. Come on. Rats and bats. Squadrons of them, it seems. <laughs> A whole air force and army. We have to drive them in front of us. But the air is good. You think so? More like monkey house and chicken battery. True. But in winter, the floods come. We have to use frogman suits. Keep your torch on my feet. If a bat gets in your hair, brush him off. I hope their radar is efficient. Clusters of bats hung like bunches of withered grapes from the roof. When either Kareem's head or Bond's brushed against them, they exploded, twittering into the darkness. The forest of squeaking, scuffling red pinpoints ahead of them grew denser. When Kareem flashed his torch forward, the light shone on a grey field sown with glittering teeth and glinting whiskers. Then an extra frenzy seized the rats, and those nearest jumped on the backs of the others to get away. All the while, fighting, tumbling grey bodies came sweeping down the gutter. James, level your torch on the rear ranks. You see, they are becoming congested. Not far now. Here we are. 
Up the steps. Yeah. You go first. Yeah. Into the alcove. In a small brick-built recess were two benches on each side of a thick tarpaulin-wrapped object that seemed to reach up to the low ceiling. Another few yards in mass hysteria, eh? Us or our companions? Rats. Uh, you're right. If our destination had been any higher... Point of no return? Exactly. Out of pressure for space, they'd have hurled themselves down onto us. In spite of our two glaring eyes and German street fragrance. <laughs> Listen, James. Nothing yet, but watch. Here they come. Suddenly, the tunnel was a foot deep in a great wave of hurtling, scrambling bodies as the rats turned and pelted back down the slope. One day, those rats will start dying. Then we shall have the plague in Istanbul again. But I can't warn the authorities so long as the Russians are up there, just above our heads. Five minutes to go. Every day at three o'clock, they have their council of war. We will do them the honor of attending. <laughs> They'll have their backs to us. Two arrived in Istanbul a fortnight ago. Another last Monday. Something's going on. Huh? Sometimes the girl, your girl, James, comes in with a signal and goes out again. Huh? <laughs> Let us hope we will see her today. <laughs> now, let's get this cover off. You recognize it, Commander? <laughs> it's a submarine periscope. Where the hell did you get it? Turkish Navy war surplus. Huh? <gasps> Q branch in London is trying to fix some way of wiring that damn thing for sound. Not easy. Uh, the lens at the top of this is no bigger than a British sixpence. Eh? When I raise it, it comes up to floor level in their room. Uh, we were able to cut a small mouse hole. <sighs> By the way, is that metal... um? Blister in the corner here, what I think it is. Full marks. The bottom half of a bomb. A big one. If anything happens to me, it will be set off by a radio control from my office. Or if war breaks out? What about the innocent people who get killed besides the Russians? Sad, but when the blood is on the boil, man is as unselective as nature. Huh? Now, let us observe them. <laughs> ah, just six of them this afternoon. Head of the table is the resident director. On his left, two staff. Opposite them, the three new ones. Here, James, you take over, huh? Right. Tell me if they do anything uh. except talk. <sighs> Clever lens, eh? Huh? Designed for spotting aircraft as well as surface ships. Uh, a mouse eye view. Yes, there they are. Dull Russian faces. <laughs> Can't see much of the visitors. Oh, this chap's got a nasty boil on the back of his fat neck. Oh, if we could hear, it would be worth diamonds. It would solve a lot of... Wait! Our... The door's opening. Oh, this is her. Oh, my God. She moves like a dancer. She's beautiful. She's standing beside her chief, handing him a piece of paper. Now they're all looking up at her. She's blushing. Their expressions are curiosity, perhaps, or is it contempt? Odd. She's just one of the staff, after all. <laughs> Some corporal. Do they suspect her? No, no, the director's reading the signal. Quite friendly. She's shaking her head, holding his gaze. The others are smiling. Now she's saying, yes, sir. And... There she goes, out of the room. Well, Tatiana Romanova. So, James. What? A Russian princess, eh? In the early hours of the next morning, after a long dinner with Darko Karim, amidst the vaulted arcades of the Spice Bazaar, James Bond was back in his hotel. He hadn't gone to bed. He was sitting at one of the windows onto the balcony, sipping a third vodka and tonic, and gazing out at the tragic night sky over the Golden Horn. Tatiana. Hmm. She certainly looks like a Russian princess. Garbo-esque. And those eyelashes. But is she the sort of girl to fall in love with a photograph? Hmm. I'd like her to be. Poor Mr. 
Mr. Bond. What? You must be tired. It will be dawn soon. Who's that? Come to bed, Mr. Bond. Ah. Oh. At last. What are you doing in my bed? <laughs> you look lost in it. How did you get here? I walked up two floors. I live here too. You look very improper. Well, I'm going to get into bed. Oh, no. You mustn't. It's my bed, and you told me to. That was only to introduce myself. Well, I'm glad to meet you. My name's James Bond. I know. Mine's Tatiana Romanova. My friends call me Tanya. Hmm. You look just like your photographs. You must put something on. It upsets me. You upset me. Anyway, what have you got on? Just, um, this ribbon. Pull the sheet down a little. Let me see. You like it? Black velvet. Very charming. Do you think it is inadequate? Tanya, where are the rest of your things? Or did you come up in the lift like that? Oh, no. That would not have been Kulturna. They are under the bed. Please put that kimono on. <laughs> If you insist. <clears throat> I'll tell you something, Kulturna. You're one of the most beautiful women in the world. I was once told I look like Greta Garbo. Is that so? Hmm. There's more light in your face. What is that light in the face? There's a lot of fun in your eyes. That is curious. There is not much fun in Russia. Hmm. I have never been told that before. I loved your photograph. And now I love you. Tatiana. No. You're like my favorite hero in the book by Lermontov. I... Listen, Tanya. Are you really going to come back to England with me? But of course. You will protect me? Yes. But what about the machine? Oh. So, that's what you want. This machine has got nothing to do with you and me. But my people in London want it. It's actually not that important. They know all about it. They just won't want to copy. Like your people copy foreign cameras and things. Now you're lying. Tanya. Don't touch me. For God's sake, of course my people want the machine, or they wouldn't have sent me to bring you home with it. Yes. I will bring it. I'm on night duty, much later today. I shall be alone in the office from six o'clock this evening. I will take the specter and we must leave. It is the only chance. What are you thinking? What am I thinking? Where do we hide her? They'll stop at nothing to get her and the specter back. Roadblock on the way to the airport, bomb in the plane, anything. Uh, that's wonderful, Tanya. We'll keep you hidden and then take the first plane out tomorrow morning. Don't be foolish. We will take the train. This Orient Express. It leaves at nine tonight. I can't stay a minute longer in Istanbul than I have to. We will be over the frontier at dawn. You must get the tickets and the passport. I will travel with you as your wife in one of those coupés I have read about. Like a tiny house on wheels. No, Tonya, this is crazy. They're bound to catch up with us somewhere. It's five nights to London on that train. I don't care. That's the only way I'll go. If you're clever, how can they find out? It has to be the train. But why the train, Comrade Colonel? The train is a good place for love, Corporal Romanova. You will have time to get this man to love you. Then when you get to London, life will be easy. He will protect you. If you fly, you will be put straight into prison. The four days are essential. We will have men on the train to see you don't get off. Obey your orders. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yet now I long for those four days. How curious. It was my duty to force him, to seduce him. Now it is my passionate desire. If I could only tell him it is just a harmless conspiracia to get me to England. Well, I still think it's crazy. But all right. I've got the passport. It will need a Yugoslav visa. I'm not taking you on the part of the train that goes through Bulgaria. I shall think you want to kidnap me. I do. 
<laughs> I do want to. Shut up. I'll have one of our men come along, just in case. You met him, of course, on the Bosphorus Ferry. He's a good man. By the way, your name's Caroline Somerset. Don't forget it. Caroline Somerset? My pretty name. Hmm. And you are Mr. Somerset? <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. I will come to the train just before it leaves. It is the Sirkiji station. Suppose you lose your nerve. Suppose they catch you. No. I should leave my things in the hotel and take my usual bag to the office. I cannot leave my fur coat behind, though. I love it too dearly. But today is Sunday, and that will be an excuse to come to the office in it. Tonight, at half past eight, I shall walk out and take a taxi to the station. Say that you're pleased. <laughs> well... Yeah. James... Below Tatiana Romanova's closed eyes, her long lashes quivered like hummingbird's wings. James. Above, unknown to both of them, behind the gold-framed false mirror on the wall over the bed, two cine cameramen from Smirsch sat together in the cramped cabinet de voyeur, just as so many friends of the proprietor had sat on honeymoon nights in the penthouse of the Palace Hotel. Oh, come on, Tatiana, come on, where the hell are you? It's almost nine. Yes, yes, I'm just waiting for Madame. Monsieur, s'il vous plaît. James! What? Quick, James, climb up. Quick! Ours is Coupe 7. Quickly, Monsieur, I beg you. It's all right. Ah, oh, merci, Monsieur. Uh, Madame was late. She came along the corridor. Uh, Madame is along there, Monsieur. Thank you. Nice carpet. Uh, uh, coupe 7, Monsieur. Well, good evening. You have no faith, James. Move over. Tonya, if there was a little more room, I'd put you across my knee and spank you. What happened? Nothing. I said I would be here, and I am here. Since I'm sure you're more interested in my diary than me, it is up there, on the rack. The metal case? Oh. Well, thank God you're safe. That's reassuring. Oh, I see you didn't forget your nice coat. Bond took out a cigarette and lit it. The girl watched his face with tenderness. What is he thinking? Will he forgive me when we get to London? And I tell him I was sent to seduce him. That he was only my passport to England. Him and the case that the resident director gave me an hour ago. Corporal Romanova, here is your real passport. A brand new specter. Don't let it out of your compartment or this Englishman will take it away and throw you on the dust heap. It is this machine they want. Understood? Yes, comrade director. James, hold me. Tanya. Oh, James. Oh, sorry. It'll be my friend, Karim. I'll be just outside in the corridor. We shall have all the night to ourselves. Lock the door behind me. Darker? The news is not good. There are three of them on the train. I knew something was going on. Damn. It's the strangers we saw in that room. Obviously, they're onto you and the girl. Mm. Does that make her a double agent? <sighs> Wait a minute. Tonya. Oh, I thought it was the attendant come to make up the beds. Tatiana, sit down. What is it? I must look into that bag. Sure. Take it down and look. Is that a spectre machine? Of course. It's like a typewriter. These are the keys. <clears throat> right. 
There are three KGB men on the train. We know they're the ones who recently arrived at your center. What are they doing here? What? You're not going to throw me off the train now that you've got the machine. No, but we must know what they're doing. Did you know they'd be here? No, James. I, I was told they were leaving today for Germany. I assumed they would fly. I'm here with the machine. Have faith in me. You're keeping something from me, Tanya. I think it's something you don't know is important. I must talk to Karim again. Don't open the door unless you know it's me. Perhaps tomorrow it'll be easier. I'm sure she's okay, Karim. Oh, all right, James. This is your part of the operation. In my telephone talk with M this morning, he said he would back your decision, but he didn't know we were to have a KGB escort. Fair enough. Nor did we. We should remove them. Of course. I cannot afford to kill them. Well, the train would be delayed, for one thing. <laughs> Leave it to me, okay? Two of them have sleeping berths. The senior man is uh, along from you, number nine. He is traveling on a German passport under the name of Melchior Benz, salesman. Huh. The dark one is in number 12, German passport also, Kurt Goldfarb, construction engineer. They both have through tickets to Paris. I have seen their documents. Oh? Oh, yes, I have a police card. Uh, the conductor makes no trouble. He has all the tickets and passports in his cabin. The third man with the boil on his neck, uh, I have not seen his passport. He is traveling, sitting up in first class next to my compartment. He does not have to surrender his passport until the frontier. But uh, <laughs> soon he will surrender his ticket. Huh. Before he settles down for the night, this dumb ox will have to do one thing. Follow me. We will wait for him. There he goes. Ugh, he also has boils on his face. And yes, he is about to visit the lavatory. Hold for a moment. Wait. Okay. Come on. You hang on to the handle very tight, James. Got it. Now watch. Ticket collector! Ticket collector! Ticket, please! B.I. s'il vous plaît! Farkaten, bitte! Hang on to it, James. Now, now he thinks the door has stuck. Uh, oh, do not derange yourself, monsieur. Push the ticket under the door. Huh? Give him another moment. Huh? And presto, James. Just the ticket. Merci, monsieur. Merci, merci. Thank you. Come on, James. Come on. Stupid oaf thinks it will be given back to him at the frontier. He is mistaken. <laughs> it will be in ashes. He will be put off the train, however much money he has got. No ticket, <laughs> no travel. What about the other two, Darker? Uh, the way to catch Russians? Embarrass them. I will talk to the conductor. Go to your girl. We will meet again in the morning. James, have no fear. We will make these men sweat. The KGB will punish them for failing in their duty. <laughs> they will be shot. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Bond was shaving as the Orient Express drew away from the Turkish frontier. He turned for a last look out of the window back towards the station, where now two men were sitting in a bare room under what amounted to sentence of death. Two out of three birds down, Tanya. The odds look more respectable. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day. Ow! Ah. No. Blood, James? Or no blood? Close shave, yes? Very good, Tanya. Yes? Karim. Come in. Good morning, you two. Huh? What a charming domestic scene. I have rarely seen a handsome pair of spies. I am not accustomed to Western jokes. You learn, my dear. In England, they make a joke of everything, eh, James? It greases the wheels, huh? Those poor fellows at the frontier. 
I fear the careers of your two comrades have come to a sad end, Mrs. Somerset. How did you do it, Darko? For number 12, five hundred dollars to the conductor, big talk to the police. And the man with the boils? Easy. Traveling without a ticket is a serious matter. <laughs> Unfortunately, that crafty Benz is still with us in number nine. I couldn't do the passport trick twice. We shall have to get him some other way. But we have won the first round, and he knows what he has to reckon with. So, now we can move about, have lunch together, eh? Cocktails and piano music in the bar car, eh? <laughs> as long as you bring the family jewels with you. We must watch to see if he makes a telephone call at one of the stations, but uh, I doubt if he could tackle the Greek telephone exchange. Probably he will wait till Yugoslavia. There, I can get reinforcements. Well, always excitement on the Orient Express, eh? And uh, romance. I will call for you at lunchtime, eh? Greek food is worse than Turkish, but even my stomach is in the service of the Queen. Eh? A bientôt. Boom, 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 boom. Your friend is not Kulturni. It is disloyal to refer to your Queen in that manner. I thought he was your friend. Tonya, that is a wonderful man. He's jealous of me. He'd like to have a girl like you, so he teases you. You should take it as a compliment. You think so? But what he said was rude to your queen. This is bad manners in Russia. <sighs> What's the time? How long have I been asleep? <sighs> An hour. Dushka, how long shall we have this for? <laughs> as long as possible. Tanya, it won't always be like this. In a little room. In a few days, we shall have to step out into the world. It won't be easy. You're right. No more foolish questions. But we must waste no more of these days. James? Good evening, James. <laughs> you should not sleep so long. You have been missing the historic landscape of northern Greece. And it is time for the premier service. <laughs> All you think about is food, Karim. What about our friend next to you? He has not stirred. The conductor has been spying for me. <laughs> he, he will end up the richest conductor in the Wagon Lee Company. Perhaps you'll give him a medal for services to Turkey. Why not? He believes we are after a smuggling gang. <laughs> What news from your princess? I still feel disquiet. This Benz may be keeping to his room because he is frightened of us, but uh, these Russians are great chess players. Are we pawns on a very big board? <sighs> what can they want to achieve? Tanya may be hiding something, but I think it's only some small secret she thinks is unimportant. Hmm? She says she'll tell me everything when we get to London. Hmm. I'm not a fool, Dargo. One can gauge a lot when certain barriers are down. She's telling the truth. Ninety percent of it? If she's cheating, she's also being cheated herself. All I ask is to go on with the game until we find out what it's in aid of. <laughs> if it was me, my friend, I would slip off the train at Salonika with the machine, with the girl also, if you like. I would take a car to Athens and get the next plane for London. This is not a game to me. I was not brought up to be a sport. This is business. I know you are a gambler, James. M is a gambler. You think the odds are in your favor? Listen, my friend. This is a billiard table, and you have hit your white ball. And it is traveling easily and quietly towards the red. The pocket is alongside. You are going to hit the red and the red is going into that pocket. The law of the billiard table. But James, outside the orbit of these things, a jet pilot has fainted and his plane is diving straight at that billiard room. Or a gas main is about to explode or lightning is about to strike and the building collapses on top of you and on top of the billiard table. So what has happened to that white ball? Hmm? And the red ball, the white ball could not miss according to the laws of the billiard table. But the laws of the billiard table are not the only laws. 
and the laws governing the progress of this train are not the only laws in this particular game. Mr. Somerset! Mr. Somerset! Open, please! Who is it? Le conducteur, monsieur. There has been an accident. What? Accident, monsieur. Wait. What's happened? Follow me, monsieur. Follow, please. Ici, monsieur. Here. Oh, my God. My God. Along the right-hand seat of the compartment, two bodies, frozen in a ghastly death. Bond listened to his imagination. I see it. Kareem sleeping in his seat. The KGB man, Benz, slipping quietly through the door. A swift stroke at the jugular. Then Darko flings up an arm and plunges his own knife into his murderer. Darko Karim. Both. Extinguished. Universal export? Possibly. Where are you? Belgrade. We have to wait here for the section of the Orient Express that comes in through the Iron Curtain from Bulgaria. How are sales? Unfortunately, my partner has gone very sick. Any fresh instructions? Very sick? Very, sir. How about the other firm? There were three with us, sir. One of them caught the same thing. The other two didn't feel well on the way out of Turkey. They left us at the frontier. Ah. Would you and your wife like to take another way home? I'd rather you decided, sir. My wife's all right. The sample's in good condition. I'm still keen to finish the trip. Should one of our other salesmen give you a hand? Just as you feel, sir. You really want to see this sales campaign through? Well, it seems a pity not to cover the rest of the route. All right. I'll think about giving you another salesman. Nothing else on your mind? No, sir. Goodbye, sir, is it? Goodbye, sir. I really think we've made it, Tanya. Trieste, charming villas on the Corniche. The sea? <laughs> I know we should be sad, James, but sailing boat. Mm, Italian sunshine, holiday heaven. <laughs> that fellow in the grey flannels and the brogues coming up the platform. English tourist, if ever I saw one. It looks like he's uh, boarding the train. Hems mm. back up. Anyway, not long now. I say, excuse me, old man. Could I borrow a match? Oh. I use a lighter. Here you are. Better still. Until they go wrong. Perfect. Well, glad to see you. How did it happen? Uh, got a signal late last night about Kareem. Personal from M. Shook me, I can tell you. Mm, it must have. What else did it say? Just told me to get on the Orient this morning. More or less described what you both look like. I'm to see you both through to Gay Paris. That's all, old man. Well, good to have you along. Probably not much for you to do. We started off with three Redland men. They've been got rid of, but there may be others on the train. Gather you've got to get this girl to London without trouble. That's right. Look, tonight we'd better share watches. By the way, my name's James Bond. Oh, I know. Privilege. Travelling as David Somerset, and that's, um, Caroline Somerset in there. Jolly good. Uh, my card. Norman Nash. Captain. Oh, thank you. Royal Automobile Club. Of course. <laughs> well, Nash, come and meet my, uh, my wife. No reason why we shouldn't travel more or less together. Delighted, old chap. Hello? Darling? It's me? Oh, one moment. James? Come in, Nash. Off to you. Hello. Tanya, this is Captain Nash. Norman. He's been told to keep an eye on us. How do you do? What, huh? <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thanks. Uh, will you have a cigarette, Mrs. Somerset? Um, thank you. Light? Mr. Somerset? Ah, oh, Virginia Tobacco. Not my favorite, but, uh, thanks. 
You look very fit, Nash. Thank you. Tennis? Swimming. Been long in Trieste? About uh, three years. Hmm. Interesting work. Sometimes. You know how it is. Oh, by the way, uh, seen this headline? Terrible Explosione Istanbul. Explosion in the Soviet so-called headquarters. Mm. Thank you. Bad show. If anything happens to me, it will be set off by a radio control from my office. Sad. Absolutely, old man. Gas main, I suppose. Well, yes, I, d I dare say it was. Mm. Premier service, prenez vos places, s'il vous plaît. Premier service. Ah, lunch. Premier service, mesdames et messieurs, prenez vos places, s'il vous plaît. Tanya? Uh, yes. Nash? Uh, had it. Thanks, old man. I'm going to have a look up and down the train. Is the conductor, you know... Uh... Cooperative? Oh. oh, yes. I do not like him, James. Yeah, funny sort of bloke. Straight out of Woodhouse. <laughs> Woodhouse? You mean like Dacha? Hmm? No, never mind. Actually, I'm glad he's come along. Chance to get some sleep. You knew him before? No, but he, uh, he belongs to my firm. What did you say his name is? Nash. Norman Nash. N-A-S-H? Yes. You know what that means in Russian? Nash means ours. In our services, a man is Nash when he's one of our men, and he's Svoy when he's one of theirs, when he belongs to the enemy. Nash. That is not pleasant. It's quite a common English name. He's harmless and tough enough for what we want him for. Hmm. Well, anyway, this escalope is delicious. Since I came out of Russia, I am all stomach. <laughs> you won't let me get fat, James. So fat that I'm no use for making love. <laughs> you will beat me if I eat too much. Certainly I'll beat you. <laughs> Tuck in. Please pay. I feel sleepy. We'll be coming into Venice soon. Don't you want to see it? It's just a station. I can see Venice another day. Come back to the coupe. I want you to love me. Please, James, give me what I want. There's so little time left. Padua, and then a fabulous sunset over Verona, flickering gold and red through the cracks of the blind. Bond dressed and went into the corridor. He looked out at the fading pink light over the Lombardy Plain and thought of Tatiana and the future. They went into dinner, then drinks afterwards in the bar car. Excuse me butting in, you two, but I think I've spotted one of the oppo. Who is he? Don't know his real name, but he's been through Trieste once or twice. Now he's on an American passport in coupe number eight right next to you, old man. This may be a tough night. Like a drink? Sit down. Oh, thank you. I'll just, uh... Excuse me, this is Somerset. Oh, oh, oops. Look out! Oh, you spilled well, my wine. I, I apologize. I, here, here, let me get you another. No, it's all right. Uh, no, old chap, I'll do it. Sorry, this is Somerset. <laughs> another bum de Venise. And now it was Tatiana who was clumsy. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Hey, Kev. Tatiana, what's the matter? I don't know. I. It, it, it's all right, I've got her. Allow me, Mrs. Somerset. Waiter. I'll see her back to the compartment, Bond. You'd better look after the bag. And the bill. I can take care of her till you come. Thanks. Waiter! Poor darling. She's been going through a lot of strain. You take her back, Nash. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, don't, don't worry, James. I lie down. That's it, Mrs. Somerset. You'll be fine here. Excuse me. Thank you. Excuse me. Hey. How is she? Bit of a faint. She's all right now. Come in. She's gone to sleep in the top bunk. Oh, let's see. Oh, good. Better sleep. That's right. Well, I suppose we'd better settle in for the night. I've got my book, War and Peace. Been trying to plow through it for yonks. You take the first sleep, old man. Oh, I say. Have you got a gun? Yes. Why haven't you? No, afraid not. I've got a Luger at home, but it's uh, too bulky for this sort of job. Hmm. Better take mine. Here. 
Eight shots, semi-automatic, it's on safe. Mm. Bit on the light side. Hmm? It'll still kill if you put the bullets in the right places. Right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll take this into the bunk. Hmm. Bond leant back against the pillows and propped his feet on the bag containing the spectre that now stood on the floor beside his attaché case. He picked up his book, then laid it down, closed his eyes. Could he afford to sleep? He switched off the reading light behind his head. The violet eye of the nightlight shone softly down. Thanks, old man. I say, Bond, old man. Bond. <sighs> Sorry to disturb you. <clears throat> You're not so good as you think you are, you know. You fool. There's no one from Moscow in number eight. Bond, I feel in the mood for a talk. Bond sat up. Danger like a third man was standing in the room. Fine. What is it? Is it madness in the room and not danger that I can smell? Tanya's instincts about Nash were right. So, get rid of him. When's the next frontier? What's the time? Bond felt a violent blow on his wrist. Splinters of glass from his wristwatch hit him in the face. His arm was flung back against the door. The book was still open on Nash's lap, but now a thin wisp of smoke was coming out of the hole at the top of its spine. Oh, I see, Nash. I see. A trap all along. You've been sent to me by Moscow, not by him. Bravo, old man. Oh, pip, pip. That little pot shop was just demonstration. Mm. Not an expensive wristwatch, I hope. <laughs> My name's Grant, actually. Originally. Granitsky now. They think I'm pretty good with this little volume. Ten bullets in it. Point two five, dum dum. Too bad your book is only for reading, old man. For God's sake, stop calling me old man. Sorry, old chap. It's getting to be a habit. Part of trying to be a bloody gentleman. Like these clothes from the wardrobe department. <laughs> but let's get down to it. It's about half an hour before you're due to go. I can spare you half an hour. Don't kid yourself. You're going to die in half an hour. Or I wouldn't have my job. Which is? Chief Executioner of Smirsch. You know the name, I believe. So where does the girl come into all this? Part of the strategy. She won't butt in. When I got her that glass of wine, I fed her a pinch of chloral hydrate. She's out for the night. And every other night. She's to go with you. Oh, really? Well, let's hear the story. Careful, old man. If I don't like even the smell of a move, it'll just be one bullet through the heart, nothing more. That's what you'll be getting in the end anyway, one through the center of your heart. If you move, it'll come a bit quicker. That's all. Look at your wristwatch. I never miss. And you've got my gun. So don't scratch your ear or I'll shoot it off. Well, Bond. Smirch decided to kill you. Seems they wanted to bring your secret service down a peg or two. Why me? Who knows? But it's a beaut. Our head of operations is quite a character. Name of Kleb. Rosa Kleb. Real swine of a woman. Certainly knows all the tricks. So there's a woman at the top of Smirsch. Well, well. She found this Romanova girl. Trained her up. By the way, how was she in bed? Pretty good? They've got some nice film of you, too. Oh, real? I have it here. It's going straight into her handbag. It'll look fine in the newspapers. <laughs> They'll have to cut some of the juiciest bits, of course. You bastard! <laughs> I told you not to move. Did the girl know about the pictures? Of course not. She's a pawn. Rosa didn't trust her a yard. Too emotional. But she knew she was working for Smirch. Now, in about 20 minutes, we go into the Saint-Plan tunnel. That's where they want it done. One bullet for you, in the heart, then one in the back of the neck for her, with your gun. Then one more for you, your gun. Old man, the story's got everything. Orient Express, beautiful Russian spy, murdered, secret cipher machine. Handsome British spy, with career ruined, murders her and commits suicide. It'll run and run. And what a poke in the eye for your famous intelligence service. As a matter of fact, old man, the spectre machine is booby-trapped. <laughs> when your experts start fiddling with it, it'll blow them all to glory. The story of the century. You took a bit of a gamble joining the train at Trieste. I didn't. I rode down with you. In the front of the train. 
got out as we stopped and walked back up the platform. You see, old man, we were waiting for you in Belgrade. Knew you'd call your chief or the embassy or someone. Been listening in for weeks. Intriguing. There's only one thing, though. Hmm. What's that, old man? You have a problem. Oh, really? What's that? Come on. What problem? Not without a cigarette. May I smoke one of my own? Go ahead. But if there's a move I don't like, you'll be dead. Little ahead of time. That's all. I'm obliged. Here goes. Right hand into hip pocket. Gunmetal cigarette case. That's it. Open. Cigarette. Lighter. And lighter back in pocket. Leave cigarette case on lap. Left hand casually over book and cigarette case. Puff away. That's a start. You see, Nash. Bond described an airy circle with his cigarette to distract Nash's attention. His left hand slipped the flat cigarette case between the pages. He lifted the book towards his chest. Your problem is, what on earth are you going to do after we come out of the tunnel? They'll be on to you in a flash. <laughs> that. <laughs> I get off at Dijon and I take a car to Paris. Matter of fact, I got a date there at noon tomorrow. Room 204 Ritz Hotel, reporting to Rosa. I think she may have the order of Lenin for me in her bag. Lovely grub, as they say. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, what a way to die, eh? That is, if I am going to die through my own lethal stupidity and lethal for Tatiana. Just a few more seconds, Mr. Bond. The end game. I live for this. Just a few more yards. All right, you English bastard. Sweet dreams. Don't move, James. Lie like a dead man. Oh, a bullet must have gone through the cigarette case, then through the other half of the book. Oh, hot lead over my heart. Okay. Retaliation. Right hand touching Q's attaché case. Pretty nifty, 007. And in each of the sides, a flat throwing knife built by Wilkinson's action. The sword makers. Yes, please, Q. Focus, James. In seconds, he'll climb onto the bottom bunk. Feel for the base of Antonia's neck, and then... No! Wish me luck, Q. Edge of case. Press sideways. Feel for knife. Got it. Draw it out. And, as he steps across me, stab upwards. Go! <laughs> oh, oh. Ah. Tanya. Tatiana. Wake up, my love. What? Um, James? Tanya, wake up. James? Don't. Don't pinch my ear. <laughs> it's all right. Don't. What is it? Change of plan. An eventful night. We're through Switzerland. The suitcase is ready in the corridor. Bit of a getaway at Dijon. You've got an hour to wake up properly, my darling. Come on. Monsieur Somerset, qu'est-ce que c'est? Do not disturb yourself, Monsieur le Conducteur. We are leaving the train. Oh. Madame has not been well. Oh. My friend in Coupe 7 is a doctor. He's been sitting up with us all night. He is now asleep in my bunk. It would be kind not to wake him until just before Paris. Here, Monsieur. Merci. Oh. Au revoir. Come along, Caroline. That's it. Come on, mind your step. Merci, Monsieur, Madame. Au revoir. Two double vodka martinis, monsieur. Ah, merci. Santé, René. To yours. Sincerely, my dear James. Drink quickly. You must be dead punctual. She's expecting the late Granitsky. If a Russian spy is even a few minutes early... Or late. 
I know. The rendezvous is automatically cancelled. Correct. Now, all is good. Your girl is sleeping in a bedroom at the embassy. Mm. The spectre has been taken away by my bomb disposal squad. Mm. And courtesy of the concierge here at the Ritz, your pass key for room 204. What about the basket? Have confidence, Sher James. I will execute your mysteries. Two men with a large laundry basket will come to room 204 at 1215. I will accompany them. We are to load the basket and take it to Orly Airport. And wait there for an RAF camera which arrives at 2 o'clock. We hand over some dirty washing from France, which will be in England. Is that it? Correct. Go, James. Uh, You have your Beretta? Oh, yes. I can feel the silencer across my stomach. It's quite warm. Keep your hand on the gun as you go in. Bon chance. Come in. It is open. Oui, monsieur. Oh, have I made a mistake? What a charming room. What may I do for you? Well, I'm sorry to disturb your knitting. My name is Bond. James Bond. And I, monsieur, am the Comtesse Messerstein of Schaffhausen. You enjoy wireless? Tchaikovsky, my favorite overture to commemorate Russia's defense of Moscow against an advancing enemy. Can I assist you? I'm afraid Captain Nash has met with an accident. I do not understand you, monsieur. I have not the pleasure of the captain's acquaintance. Please, state your business. Come, sit beside me. You may hold my wool. I'll stay over here, if you don't mind. Your needles. The tips look alarmingly... um... Discovered, monsieur? I almost can't fault you, Colonel Kleb. Your graciousness is devastating. Monsieur, I'm afraid you are deranged. It's no use, Rosa Kleb of Smirsch, torturer and murderer. You wanted to kill me and the Romanov girl. I'm very glad to meet you at last. You are mad, monsieur. I must ring for the valet de chambre. As her hand slammed down, Bond hurled himself sideways, crashing into the radio ground. Some bell push. He twisted over, tugging at his gun. Shot! Yes, of course, Rosa. Those colored tips. Deadly. Nerve poison, perhaps? Mr. James Bond, all I have to do is scratch you, even through your clothes. Bond was on his feet again. He tucked furiously at his gun. Damn it! Damn it! The silencer had caught. One of the needles rattled against the wall behind him, and the dreadful chunk of woman's slimy lips drawn back from her teeth was almost on top of him. Bond vaulted sideways over the desk. Knew we just! Knew you just! Knew Padre's dead! Rosa Clebb held forward the remaining needle like a rapier. Bond backed away, working at the stuck gun, then reached behind him and snatched up a small chair. Holding it by the back, with its legs pointing like horns, he moved towards her. A hand went to the bogus bell push. No, you don't! <laughs> gotcha! The legs of the chair clutched Rosa Clebb round the waist and over her shoulders, forcing her to the wall. Get back! Gosh, you're strong. You get back, woman! <laughs> Stay there! Shot! Shot! To be a pavadi! Shot! Watch this high kick, you scorpion! <laughs> Sorry, Rosa. Finally pinned, eh? The Dersiam will be here in a minute. Soon you'll be in London. By the time we finish with you, you'll be ready for the lunatic asylum. A basket case. And where will you be, Mr. Bond? Getting on with my life. I think not, Anglisky Spion. Eh bien, James. Brilliant. The lion tamer position. I don't recommend it, René. Too strenuous. Anyway, you can take over now. Ah. This is Rosa Kleb. You'll like her. A big noise in Smirsch. She looks after the murdering, as a matter of fact. Comment ça va, Rosa? May I introduce my laundry man? Yes, the boy. Squitaius. Merci, but this time, Rosa Malheur. An uncomfortable position. Gouda, de panier. She will be more comfortable lying down. Ah, take her. An honor, Colonel Clare. Au revoir, Rosa. Ubariti. Farewell, Mr. James Bond. Das Vedania. Oh, one last thing. I can kick too. Paluchai! Paluchai! Wow, the lady packs quite a load the laundry in. Handcuff her. Stop her mouth! Gagger! Oh, my 
my poor game. Carlton Smith to try a final kick. Congratulations. What an achievement. Uh, yeah. Homeless bundle of old woman on her way to England. Quite a kick. A good day's work, my friend. You look tired. Go back to your embassy. Mm. Have a rest. This evening we must have dinner together. And I'll find you the loveliest girl to go with it. What? I feel numb. Huh? Cold. I c- c- James? can't feel. I-, I sure need a girl, Rene. Uh, uh, James, what's wrong? I've already got the loveliest the blade when she kicked me. What? James. James? James. I've been wondering where you'd got to. A Russian princess. You've been facetious, 007. Certainly not. It's not much fun in Russia. Only one way of telling if a woman really loves you. Suppose I don't come up to her expectations. I say, Bondo, man. What about the innocent people who get killed besides the Russians? I want you to love me. You're not so good as you think you are. When the blood is on the boil, man is as unselective as nature. You will protect me? And where will you be, Mr. Bond? You fool. Fool's mate. Happy double seven. Doesn't do to get mixed up with neurotic women in this business, James. Farewell, Mr. James Bond. James! 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 In From Russia with Love, James Bond was played by Toby Stevens, Rosa Klebb by Eileen Atkins, and Grant, a.k.a. Nash, by Nathaniel Parker. Kerim Bay was played by Tim Pigott-Smith, and Tatiana Romanova by Olga Federi. Colonel Kronstein, Mark Gatiss, the Russian General and Rene, John Sessions, M, John Standing, Moneypenny, Janie D, and Q, Julian Sands. May, Aileen Mowit, the Russian major and KGB director, John Glover, hotel manager and Orient Express attendant and conductor, Matthew Wolfe, and Turkish station announcer, Mickey Stratford. The Orient Express pianist was Lucy Parham, specially composed music by Mark Holden and Michael Lopez. Martin Jarvis was the voice of Ian Fleming. From Russia with Love was dramatized by Archie Scottney, directed by Martin Jarvis, and is a Jarvis and Ayres production. <laughs>